The enemy has invaded. Hi everybody, welcome to Living Traditions Homestead. My name is Sarah and uh, it is the time of year when our homestead and like everybody else's homestead in this area uh, is invaded by the Japanese beetles. And um, I'm not sure what it is, but this year it seems like they are here with a vengeance. Uh, we noticed a couple of them, um, maybe a couple days ago, one or two here and there. And now all of a sudden they're everywhere and they're just piling on our orchard trees, um, on our berry bushes, the wild grapes, uh, some of our bean plants in the big garden. And it's just time to do something. Uh, so I wanted to show you today how we are going to take care of the problem. Uh, it's a natural solution. Uh, it doesn't uh, get sprayed on the trees or anything. It's approved uh, through organic gardening. Um, and uh, let me show you what we're going to be using. This is serious business, you guys. In the matter of a couple of days that they've been on our property, they have started decimating our fruit trees. I'm going to show you some video of all of the damage that they're already causing. Uh, it's like an emergency. Within a couple of days, uh, they could decimate our entire orchard. They're just going through everything. It seems like they're even more vicious this year than last year. Uh, so we need to hurry up and get uh, this uh, this trap actually uh, up and going. It's about 10 in the morning right now and they are most active between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So this is prime opportunity for us to start uh, luring them away from our plants and getting them in this trap. Now I want to show you what we're going to be using this year and uh, why we like this so much. We used this last year and it worked really well for us. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but if you want to learn more about it, we are putting it um, in our Amazon shop for you to take a look at. Look at it, it's working already. So this is a trap that has um, a lure. It's actually um, a pheromone, a sexual pheromone for the beetles up in here. And so they smell it and they're attracted to it and then they fall down inside of this trap. They can't get back out and they collect down in this bag. This bag then has like a, a Ziploc seal uh, that you can open um, and dump out the, uh, the beetles into a bucket or whatever to uh, kill them. Last year we emptied these into buckets and we had filled the buckets with water to drown them, but that really created a terrible smell. So this year we're just going to cover the buckets with a lid <laughs> and uh, until they die and then we're going to feed them to the chickens. They really liked them last year until they had like had enough. Um, and then I think we just uh, composted them. Um, so this is what we're gonna be using. We're gonna get these up, uh, start using them. And then at the end of the day today, we will show you how many we have collected, show you how to empty them, um, and then just see what the day holds. But I tell you, we need to get them up. They're all over the place. They're dive bombing me right now. Um, ah! But uh, <laughs> we, need to get, we need to get them going and I need to stop holding those. So we have four of them. We have uh, spots that we're going to be putting them up around the property um, and to get going. All right, so the first one we're going to put up right here is on our electrical pole. Uh, they just come with a little twist tie that you can wrap around. There's already like 20 of them in the bag, so that's good. Um, but I bet by tonight we're going to have thousands of them. Maybe millions, billions probably. There's so many of them. Oh, one thing to make sure, because I did this last year, is make sure you actually have the zip lock thing shut on the bottom, because last year I put one up and didn't have it shut, and they were just going in and out, in and out, around in a circle. So this is number one. We've got three more we're going to put up in different parts. Let's go figure out where. All right, so the second one we're going to put off of this uh, black walnut tree. Uh, it's right by three of our raised bed gardens and not too far from the orchard either. So maybe it'll attract more from the orchard, but uh, hopefully it keeps everything off of, uh, we have carrots and uh, beets and uh, turnips and things in these gardens. And so hopefully it attracts them away from there. Uh, I know we're gonna put one back by our corn, so let's go back there. All right, so I'm back kind of behind our garden and that's where I'm gonna put the third one here. I'm gonna just hang it off this little branch. And last year, uh, we had a lot of them on our corn. We grew popcorn last year. This year we're growing a blue um, 
corn for flour, but um, what happened last year is as soon as the corn started to tassel, um, the Japanese beetles ate all the tassels off, uh, which we were really worried would affect pollination. It ended up uh, not having a big effect on the pollination, um, but I don't want to take the chance. Uh, I don't know if that was, you know, maybe just a fluke last year. So we're putting one back here. Hopefully it draws them away from the corn and uh, over to the trap instead. Uh, the last one we're going to put up is on the front side of the big garden uh, off the corner of our chicken uh, house. All right, so the last one's going right here off the uh, roof of our chicken house. And this is just about 10 feet away from the uh, garden fence. So there we go. When I said I wanted to do more trapping this year, this isn't exactly what I had in mind, but uh, I think we're going to get a lot of them. So we'll check back with you guys uh, this evening and let you know how it's going. Well, it's been 24 hours. Uh, we had hoped to show you at the end of the day um, how many we had collected, but you know what? We were actually working until dark, and then we thought about it and said, well, I guess we're gonna have to wait till the morning. So it's been a full 24 hours. Uh, we're gonna go to each one of the bait stations and show you how much uh, were collected in each of the bags. Um, and we're gonna be emptying them into a bucket, uh, which is gonna be kind of tricky because they're all still alive. Uh, so we'll, we're going to work together, Kevin and I, uh, to get him in the bucket and then quick put the lid on. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway, in this first bag, this is over by our um, uh, some of our raised beds. Uh, it looks like uh, it's about this full. Um, and so that's not too bad. I don't think that we have hit the height of the Japanese beetle season quite yet. Uh, there were times last season where uh, we would almost fill the whole thing up in one day. Uh, hopefully, maybe they're just not going to come that uh, that uh, heavily this year. That'd be great. Uh, but they are doing their job still today. Uh, they're flying down in there, and uh, they're definitely being attracted to the lure. Uh, so that's this one. Let's see how the next one is doing. All right, it's time to check the trap that we have in the orchard. But I wanted to show you guys uh, just how bad this problem is right now. Uh, this is our uh, one of our peach trees. And uh, what we've been doing is coming out a couple times a day, uh, every few hours, honestly, and uh, shaking the tree to get the beetles to fly around again in hopes that they'll fly over to the trap versus just staying on the tree. So I'm gonna shake this so you guys can kind of see how many fly off of here. All right, ready? I don't know if you can see that on the video or not, but there's probably a hundred or more that flew off this little tree when I shook it. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that, but let's go look in the trap because this trap has the most by far. I don't know if you can see just how many are around the trap right now, but there's probably 30 of them just swarming around the trap right now. And this trap is filled to about right here in 24 hours. I mean, that's a lot of beetles. I'll try to get a close up down inside of the trap for you. All right, that's looking down into the trap. You can see them all in there, little buggers. They're gonna make some good chicken food though. All right, so we already emptied the first trap in here. Uh, now we're gonna try to put empty this one in as well without letting these out. It requires what? teamwork for right, sure. Right, right. So, we'll take this down. And this one, again, has a lot in there. It's really kind of creepy. It is pretty creepy. And you can hear them buzzing in the bucket. Mm. So, I'll put this down. That didn't work. <laughs> we might need four buckets. Can can you undo it, but don't let them out, and then just go whoosh, and they'll all fall in? I don't know. I don't know if the second I unzip this, they're gonna come out. See, and if the bag isn't up, if you lay the bag on its side, they can get out. Here, let's fold it, and then they can't get out that way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Ready? One, 
two, three. Okay. Go. Woo! <laughs> ha! We did it. I think we got a system. They're gross. They are gross. No. No. There's still a couple in there, but not many. They're fine. The instructions do say that um, after a couple uses, after a couple times you you uh, empty them out, you should like wash it out with water because there's uh, just like body Dead parts bugs. and yeah, it's already pretty stinky, honestly. But put this sucker back in there. They're trying to get at it. All right. All right. So that's number two. Let's head over to number three. So remember yesterday we were telling you about how many of them get on our wild grapes. Here's some of the wild grape vines and they are just absolutely covered in these Japanese beetles. I think the best plan is to almost use the grape vines as an additional trap. To leave it here so they have something to eat other than our garden. That's our plan at least for now until we learn that that's not a good idea. Well this is kind of a surprise for us. Uh, we're back at the very end of the big garden, back by our corn, um, and this is just hanging in a tree. We thought for sure there'd be hardly any bugs in here. Look, and they're just like swarming into this. Uh, there is almost as many bugs in here as in the orchard trap. Um, you know, they're up to this, maybe up to there in this trap, and they're just flocking toward it. This is like the new popular place to be for the Japanese beetles, and that's awesome. Uh, they're actually just swarming off of um, the blackberry bushes that we have wild over here and the wild grapevines that we have over here. They're just kind of swarming this way into this trap. Uh, so we're going to get this into the bucket um, and then head over to the last one. All right, so here's the last trap. Uh, this is the one hanging off the side of our uh, chicken coop and it's uh you know kind of by some of our raised bed gardens this one doesn't have quite as many uh, which isn't a surprise this one's filled to about here uh it really isn't that big of a surprise i mean at least it's that many more not in our garden so we're going to empty this one and then we'll see if we can uh, show you how many are in the bucket all right so we have all four traps emptied um i was hoping i'd be able to hold it up to the sun and you guys could see through the bucket how many are in there but it's about two and a half or three inches uh deep in there of beetles which is a, a lot of beetles it's a lot of beetles for 24 hours so yeah. um, our plan now is to just set this in the most direct part of the sun for the next 24 hours uh, let as many of those little buggers die as possible uh, i might even go out and shake it up once in a while just to be extra mean to them <laughs> and then i'm going to uh feed them to the chickens. Yeah, so. and we'll be doing this really for the next six to eight weeks. Uh, that's about how long the season uh, with Japanese beetles is. The good news is the traps, the lures, um, are good for that length of time. So when you make one pur purchase, it's for the whole uh, Japanese beetle season. Right, and we bought these, uh, I think they were about $7 a piece. So a yeah. little over $20 uh, to, you know, hopefully save a good part of our crop. Right, and if you want to learn more about those, uh, we did put a link to them in our Amazon shop uh, just for you to learn more information. So you guys, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you live in a place where they don't have these, uh, but if you do, uh, hopefully this has helped you out. It really does work well. Yeah, it really does. And I think last year it made a, a, a good improvement for us. So, hey, if you're not a subscriber to our channel yet, uh, this is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button below. Uh, if you're one of our traditionalists, thank you so much for coming back day after day. And until next time, thanks for coming by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.